Hi everyone, welcome to Solar Integrations. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to set up an automation to automatically change your inverter settings based on changes in the level of load shedding from ESCOM. Um, and for this, we're going to need to have the ESCOM Push integration installed. Um, if you don't have that installed, I'll um, put a link through to my video on how to do that. And you will also need to have an ESP32 with an RS485 board um, that integration installed. If you don't have that installed, I'll put a link through to the video on how to do that as well. Um, I'm going to set it up so that we can test it out as well. Um, I've got, um, normally we'll just get a message from ESCOM saying what, uh, an, an entity from ESCOM saying what stage we're at. Um, what I'll show you how to do is how to set it up so that we can simulate the changes in the, in the settings ourselves. So we can test it all out before we switch it through to the live, um, the live settings. As you can see over here, there, if we go to stage four, It'll change my settings to stage four settings. And if we go to stage six, how did, um, cha it'll change it to my stage six settings. I'll also be showing you how to customize these settings yourself so that you, um, so that you can set, set it up to your own requirements, each of these settings that I've got. Um, if you aren't a subscriber and you find this type of content uh, useful, please... Uh, it is free to subscribe and I do appreciate the support. Um, so um, I've got a number of other videos. So if you haven't seen any of, any of my other videos and this is your first time on the channel, please check out my channel. Um, it's all about solar integrations, um, linking up your solar to Home Assistant. And I've got a few other topics as well. So um, we will see you after the break. We'll go, go over what you're going to require to get this done. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to want to do is to create this test load shedding level um, entity over here. Um, just so that we can test out our settings and everything manually before just switching it over to the ESCOM um, settings. Otherwise, you have to wait until ESCOM changes the load shedding, which hopefully the load shedding level, which hopefully doesn't happen that often. So what we want to do is go to settings. Um, go to devices and then go to helpers up here. We're going to create a new helper um, and it is going to be a um, text value. Um, what are we going to call it? Um, test ESCOM level. Whatever you want to call it, doesn't matter. Um, minimum length, it's going to have to have um, stage and then the... Um, a space and then a number so it's got to be a minimum of six characters and I'll make it a maximum of eight characters it's just a text um, text format and we go create and um, you can set whatever icon you want to over there then in our um, in our dashboard we're going to add that into our dashboard um, Edit dashboard. I'm going to add it in over here, and it's going to be a um, input text ESCOM level. So if you just type test over there, it'll show you what it is, and um, you can set it up like that. If you type in the name over here, test three or stage three okay I go save I can now if I go to my developer tools I can see what the state is um, test and that is my test ESCOM level I can see that's at stage three so if I just go and edit that um, that over here I can just make sure that my system is working correctly these are obviously the ones which I had already but um, I can change this to stage four and then in my automation 
I'll be able to just play around with my automation and make sure that it's, that it's working correctly before I switch it to, to the ESCOM uh, uh, sensor from, which is coming from the ESCOM to push integration. Okay, so we've got our, our way to test our automation out. Now we want to have our scenes. Um, I do have a previous video on setting up scenes so that you can just push a button in your uh, Home Assistant if you want to do it. So we can use those scenes. I'm just going to go through quickly how to create a new scene for you guys who haven't seen that video. Uh, it's very easy. We go to um, add a scene. We call it uh, level 10. <laughs> Hopefully we don't get to level 10, but let's see. Um, and in there, um, I'm going to just put um, my inverter as my area. All my, all my sensors coming from my inverter are, um, I've included them in, in the inverter area. And then the entities that we want to add are going to be um, my, um, all my time zone settings. If I want to change my time zone settings. Um, they're going to be, um, let's, just go, let's just add all of those. Times on five. And yes, I see. Times on six. Okay. And my uh, priority load. So I want to be able to change my, whoops, need to spell it correctly. Priority load. Um, if I want to uh, switch between um, having my uh, the inverter powering the load or charging the battery as the priority and then I want to be able to set my charge settings um, whether I'm going to be uh, charging from the grid or not or not that's probably quite important for um, for my for my scene as well. Um, so you can include any entities in here that you want to change. So you can um, put things in like one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. So you can put um, things in like your grid shaving level, um, anything like that that you want to change. And when, when you implement this scene, it's going to change all of these values to whatever you you set it for over here so there um, so now this is going to be my level 10 settings so at level 10 settings I want to keep my battery at 80 percent and I'm just going to go through all of these I'm going to change all of these up to 80 percent okay And these are now all going to be my settings for my, my level 10 settings. Um, priority load, I want it to be on. Um, so now with that, with that toggled off, it's going to be set for, um, for battery. So it's going to charge the battery uh, before it charges the load. So if there is... If the grid is connected and my um, it's going to charge the battery first and I want to have everything charging from the grid and then what it's going to do is based on my um, on my settings over here so these settings over here so over here that's set for 80 percent so if we've had load shedding or something between five o'clock and nine o'clock in the morning and that battery power has dropped below 80%, say it's sitting at 60%, then what's going to happen is because this box is ticked to charge, it will charge it up using the grid um, up to 80%. And um, it won't charge it higher than 80%, it'll only charge it to 80%. Okay, so you can add any entity from your home assistant that you want into here. Doesn't only have to be for, for the inverter. 
Um, so if you want to have something else that gets switched off when the load shedding goes higher or something like that, you can set that in over here as well. Um, then you just click save. Um, I actually want to just go level 10 underscore load shedding. I think that's how I've got it set the other ones set up that way so let's just try keep a uh, a way of doing it let's go save okay so now yeah okay so now we want to add the automation um i'm going to put the code that i've got for the automation into the show description you guys are welcome to use that and uh, change the entity names as you need to. Um, we're going to go into automations and scenes, create a new automation, create new automation. Um, and then we want to edit it in the YAML code. And then you can just paste the that in over here. The important things that you need to look at is this sensor over here. We want to change that to that test to that test one that we've created so we can test this automation out ourselves manually and um, we're going to do that if we go over here to developer tools and we type in test there's our um, load shedding level test it's uh, input level text um, that's the one that we created it'll uh, it'll what it, whichever, whichever one you've got it'll start input text because that's the one that we created in that helper and you're going to change that for this over here this this uh, entity over here is the entity which is coming from the escom push integration so if you go and have a look at the escom push um, over here it is this uh, this level over here. So if I click on there and I go into there, there it will tell me what that um, what that entity is called in your uh, Home Assistant. It should be the same because that's the default. But uh, if it's not, then um, you you may need to change that. So you're going to be we're going to take that out for the time being, and we're going to put in the in the test one over there. So let's put in the ESCOM test level. Now these over here, what it's doing is it's going through, um, it's creating a template. And when um, the trigger for it is going to be, if, it's, if, if this value over here is stage one, stage two, or stage three, then it's going to use this scene name over here. So you're going to need to check your scene names as well. And um, you're gonna, you can do that in your developer tools. And if you type in here scene, it'll show you the scenes that you've got. So you need to check that, you, that you're uh, putting in the correct scene, scene name. And um, I think that's about it. You can use this as a base. If you want to add in extra scenes and that type of thing, you can just uh, copy this and uh, paste it at the bottom so you can add extra levels by customizing uh, by adding by changing these names over here okay so that's saved now what we want to do um, I'm not going to add in the level 10 one I don't think it's I don't think it's necessary but if you guys want to do that um, and let's just call this test okay um, so that's the test one and I'm going to use this over there let's go back go back inverter over here to my inverter settings and we want to change that um, let's change it to level two and then you can see that's now switching everything to level two and it's no longer charging from the grid level one will be the same level three will be the same and level four is going to adjust it to my level four settings. So it's going to adjust it like that. And if I go to level six, it'll adjust it. Sorry, my phone's beeping in the background. I'm getting notifications on my Home Assistant app.
Okay, so once you've successfully tested that your that your system is switching the levels correctly the way that you want and everything, what you're going to want to do is go back to your automation and change it back to your um, to your settings to your your entity which you're getting from your Escom Push um, app. So right now we're at level one. Um, I want to see what that's called. That's it over there. Sensor dot load shedding level load shedding stage ESCOM. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is just go back to my automation. Okay. And um, that over there. I'm going to go back into my YAML code, and I'm going to change it from the test one to the live one and if you have a look over there whoops it'll give you what the the options are as you're typing it in so i want it that one over there and that will now work off the escom uh load shedding level which it's going to get from escom so push so um that's that's the only thing that you need to do and then save it as your um as as your active one and um check that it's enabled and then that will now be running live and it'll change it by itself automatically okay now um i hope you guys have found that useful i am working on an integration or automation which will send you a message when the grid changes levels and then you can say do i want to update my battery levels or not um, i've just had a few problems with getting my notifications through on my phone once i've worked that out i'll share that with you guys as well so i hope you find that useful um, if you did and you aren't subscribed please subscribe it does help my channel and i do appreciate your support so thank you very much and i'll see you guys next time